Yes. Hi. Oh my goodness, that was so emotional. I, I it's the first time we've seen this video, and it was just so full of beautiful things. Um, so good morning, everybody. Thank you. Or good night. Good evening for some of you. Thank you all for, for being here with yeah. us today. And um, I'll just ask everybody if you could mute yourself at this time, if you are unmuted, just as we get started. Um, this is such an incredible time to be coming together. And I want to just um, share with you that we five women came to this conversation idea, having a conversation after a day of painting together. And we were so inspired to carry on the conversation that we thought, let's do this you know, with everybody, as many people as want to join us as can. I see this gathering as a, as a meal, as coming together to share food for our souls and food for our spirits with one another. To, to comfort to one, one another during these very, very hard times. And I can say to you that in times that I have felt despair, conversations with these women has lit a path for me forward. And I love that we can share that today with you, with everyone who has joined us. Um, we will be talking about work, we'll be talking about work balance, creativity during times of crisis. The crises that were happening when we planned this have been piled on with some more crises of epic proportions. So the overarching idea of everything is in flux and things are happening around us that are not, out, are not of our control uh, just keeps changing its face. And, um, da and daily practice, daily practice, practical things that we are doing that are helping, that are helping us. And uh, we hope that this can be useful for you and for us to share this, this conversation with each other. I'm going to turn the floor over to Tom Birmingham, who has, who created that beautiful slideshow for us. And he's going to walk us through uh, some Zoom etiquette, and then we'll be back to meet all the women. So it's over to you, Tom. Hi, that's me. Uh, good morning or good evening, everybody. Thanks for being here. I just wanted to mention a couple of things. We are asking everybody to stay muted during the talk, and then we'll have a period of time for questions at the end, and ideally people will raise their hand if hopefully you know how to do that on the little Zoom world. We're all getting good at it. Um, you might also, if you open up the chat window, or the, I'm sorry, the participant window, you will see, ask a question at the top, and that's me. So if you ask a question to that person, i.e. me, whether it's technical, I'll answer it, or if it's for the artists, I will share that with them. Um, so if you have any questions, just let me know. And now I'm going to turn it back to Erin. Okay, great. Um, I, I'm going to start off um, introducing Susan Kate Lynn. Oh, actually, I should probably start by introducing myself. Mm -hmm. So, and then Susan Caitlin. So we'll, we'll start with that. Who am I? Where, where, are, where, are, where are we? My name is Erin Lee Gaffel. I'm a painter and a writer, um, the mother of two children, married to Tom Birmingham, whom you have met. I was born in California, and I live in a log cabin in Big Sur, California, right next to the Nepenthe restaurant, which is where we're filming this portion today. So that's me. Um, I would like to hand it off to Susan Caitlin to introduce herself, and we'll just go around. Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. And thank you, Aaron and Tom, for organizing this so beautifully. Um, I am um, an artist. I was born in Carmel, and I moved all the way to Pacific Grove and, <laughs> and live here now. And um, we raised our children here. And um, I've uh, been able to pursue my desire to paint and express beauty and to live here and feel so very fortunate and that um, 
that also gives me a responsibility to um, spread that opportunity and experience and share it with others. Beautiful. Going to go to um, Tom is going to spotlight Kate Worthen. There she is. Morning, everyone. Thank you all. Um, so happy to see uh, some new faces and some familiar faces. And if I may say so, my daughter from France and my sister, who's up in Oregon. So, and everybody else, just thank you so much for joining. And um, Thanks to Tom for that beautiful introduction because honestly, I almost started crying. <laughs> and I think it's just, it's such a, you know, it, it makes me think so much about this is why we're doing this. It's so the isolation and not being able to get out and see your friends and, and all that. So anyway, um, I live in Marina, California, which is just north of uh, Monterey Bay. I'm actually on the Monterey Bay, kind of the back of the bay. But most people that come to Monterey um, Peninsula drive right past and never know it's here. But I live here. Um, I actually was born in Wisconsin, but then my family moved to California when I was about 13. I was here for a long time, moved away. Now I'm back. Um, and one of the most beautiful places in the world. And I'm thrilled to be here, thrilled to have so many beautiful places to paint and uh, thrilled to have found this wonderful group of artists to provide the esprit de corps to keep me going. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nice. Thank you, Kate. So then we'll turn it over to Cindy Mori. There you Hi. are. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, everybody, or good evening. I'm not sure where you are. Um, I'm really grateful to be here. This is exciting. I've been a teacher for about over 40 years, uh, retired from UC Santa Cruz, taught in Southern California, mostly fitness and activities. Basically, people would go, what do you teach? And I'd say, I teach happy, stick with me. That's what I like to do. I like to lift people up. Um, I even tried to do a really serious painting and it turned out to be a teddy bear and an elephant. So I don't know if I have that in me. Um, I have three children. Uh, they're all grown men and a lovely husband and a wonderful family and a new puppy for COVID. We are really fortunate to have our home here in Santa Cruz. We live near the beach, so we're safe. Um, I start my day with gratitude and I'm just grateful to be here. I'm grateful to be with these artists and have this opportunity with uh, Tom and Aaron and Kate and Suzanne. Just uh, super stoked. This is, a, this is a great opportunity and it's, it's nice to say hello to everybody. So here we go. Awesome. Awesome. Our, our fifth woman is Jillian Pinney and Jillian, um, is a nurse by profession and an artist I've painted with for over a decade. Jillian chose to not come today because she needed to take care of her, her rest and her health. And when we discussed, you know, whether to drop her from the program or not, it was like, absolutely not. Because one of the things that, that that decision really, uh, I think teaches us is that, the value of self-care, the value of acknowledging your, your, your needs, your need for rest, your need for saying no, even if you said yes, those are, those are things that we, especially women, tend to struggle with, I think. And when Jillian you know, sent me the note explaining the reasons why she had opted to not come in today for this, I felt like it was really a gift for all of us to be affirmed in that and that the power of the no is so strong and it's so against so much of the yes that we're constantly being asked to give and and kind of cultured to give so I, I include her in this because she really is with us today and she is with us in that teaching so when when we go around our conversation she'll be kind of present as that as well 
and uh, she was really grateful that to to stay on as part of our part of our team. Mm. And we've all uh, painted together and had wonderful experiences together. So I think we can all sort of hold her energy with us in the room today. So let's get the conversation started. And I want to start with this poem by Rumi, which I think is so pertinent to this moment in time. You may know this. It's a, it's a beautiful and apt poem for crisis for this time in which we find ourselves. Rumi writes, this being human is a guest house. Every morning is a new arrival a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if there are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. So in a time when we're so confronted with every day, every minute of every day, it feels like you're just being, talk about a new guest and and, and the, the way I first interpreted that when I first heard that poem was the guests of our feelings, the feelings that come into us that you wake up in the morning and you really are having a bad start to your day or, you know, a depression comes in and, or fear comes in and to, to find our way to be open to what we actually are feeling and not be chasing away the feelings because we don't want to feel those feelings. And that's, that's how I first took that poem. But um, today, as, as we're surrounded by forest fires in California, there's so much in this poem that is like so literally happening of people's homes literally being swept clean of everything. Um, it's a little bit, it's a little brutal. But that, that is a way I wanted to start today because we all, all five of us women are holding and all all of us women in the world, all of us artists, all of us human beings are holding um, this form in which all of these feelings are sweeping through and how do we navigate that and not just get drowned in it. And I want to kind of just open that back up to, to the, open up that conversation. And I think I actually will ask Susan, Caitlin first to get to, to how do you deal with this when all these feelings are sweeping in? Do you, how do you, um, how do you take in and respond to, you know, these in a time of crisis, how do you find your sort of arc of getting mm -hmm. grounded again? when all around you seems to be going to hell in a handbasket. Hmm. Well, that, that's very, um, very interesting um, for me because um, it, it hasn't felt, the world has felt very different for me for the past 18 months. Um, uh, shelter in place coincided with the uh, what we call the the first angel anniversary of our oldest daughter dying, and um, so I feel like the world has shifted for me before then, and then just you know at the anniversary of that, and then to go into shelter in place, it was um, it was like okay, here we go, a whole nother like veil of what feels like unreality, yeah. and. Mm. Um, and yet I realized, no, this isn't unreality. This is the reality. This is, um, and it's what I do with it. One of my favorite quotes is experience isn't what happens to us. It's what we do with what happens to us. And so learning to, um, as I call it, not push the river, um, and, go with the flow and see where it's taking me, allow myself that vulnerability um, 
that is where the opening is for me. Allowing mm -hmm. myself to be vulnerable and open is, is where the magic starts, where it can happen. And so, um, you know, and then the fires came and then that weird light every day. That yeah. <laughs> it was just like, yeah. okay, what's next? Right. Okay, just um, I'm not saying bring it on because um, Don't say I'm just that. <laughs> you know, getting, my, getting my feet grounded here. Mm. Um, but it's sort of like getting sea legs is what it feels like to me. And um, learning to, we do, uh, my husband and I do Qigong every morning and every night. And there's one where you learn to sway and it's called um, something about like bamboo in the wind and it's learning to keep your ground even when all these things are making you move in all these different directions it's you know owning my center so mm -hmm. um that's um oh i could go on but i know there's lots more mm. that um but that's where i'm at right now yeah um, wow yes absolutely um mm -hmm. That's so powerful. And we, we really did think of this as a COVID conversation, I think, initially, but it's so much more than that. And these are issues we have been dealing with, we have been dealing with um, far beyond, far beyond that. I was wondering if Kate might have any thoughts on this subject of, you know, how do you find your center? How do you find your grounding? when you are overwhelmed? Um, well, if I could, um, I think the best way I could express it right now is my life has so much to do with my artwork mm. because um, I'm single. Um, I don't have a lot of family nearby. I no longer work outside the house. And so my artwork um and you know my house is usually evidence of it because there's piles everywhere of some project that's going on <laughs> but so <clears throat> i think the effect of being locked down and it's just effect on me um is most obvious in how it has affected my my artwork because that's really what i do you know that's kind of the center of my existence. And <clears throat> I think I just have to ask myself like all the time, you know, why are you doing this? And I think it's more, I ask myself that question more now than I did six months ago. And I think it's, you know, it's harder to come up with, uh, it takes more of an effort. You know, I feel it's kind of weighing down on me, just everything that's going on in the world and um but the way i deal with it i think you know i i honestly think i have a lot of inner strength and that i'm basically uh, you know i'm a worry wart but i'm also a really pretty optimistic person i can usually find hope so i just kind of keep looking back you know for that mr toad moment where you're just like screw it you know i'm gonna run out and buy some new paints and you know keep going mm -hmm. um so yeah. i think that's how how i've been dealing with it and just you know and also a routine like really mm -hmm. establishing a routine for myself because um i feel like that's really important now and helps me deal with things i'm trying to like focus during the week monday through friday i'm trying to focus on um painting making sure i do art and then on the weekends like you know get organized and do grocery shopping or whatever those kind of chores that have to be done mm -hmm. so basically that yeah thank you thank you so much and we're going to come back to routine for sure because i think that uh these practical specific things that each of us do to keep ourselves in a sane space and a creative and productive space are really really great to hear about i want to know all the routines of all of you guys and i bet um I bet everyone else does too. Cindy Mori? Yes. <laughs> I want to just kind of bring that question to you in terms of, you know, how are you finding your center, so to speak, in this time? And 
Mm -hmm. How has it, how has sort of being, you know, all these things that have been sort of thrown at you. And I know you, as, as, as I did, had to prepare for evacuating your home because of the fires in Santa Cruz and for me, for the fires in Big Sur. And so on top of everything else, there's that whole other aspect. Um, so you're really living it right now, very, very, very close to just being confronted with overwhelming um, exterior energy. <laughs> so to well, speak. I think you, for me, I, I'm just getting to the point of laughing um, at the absurdity or what I thought things should be like. I think mm -hmm. once I can let go of, of what what I thought my life would be or what today would be. Um, my internet just said it's unstable and I went offline for a bit and I was <laughs> laughing then. I thought, well, that's perfect. That's kind of like what's happening now. And um, so I practice mindfulness um, and that helps me to just, when I, when I find myself getting a little nervous and upset about something, I'm, well, how am I? I just go back to the moment. How am I in this moment? Mm -hmm. And I just do second by second by second until I don't have to, till I feel calm. And connecting to the heart center is something that I can do in, in, that, in that moment. And I find that, that every time, even throughout my whole life, even throughout my childhood, when things were uh, seemingly, you know, basically out of my control, but things in the family, I would... I would kind of go into a quiet sense of myself and into my imagination a lot and, and, uh, and know I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me follow up with that question of your imagination because your artwork is so imaginative and so expressive of that. And I want to kind of loop back around because this connects so much to two things one is what are, is there a space in your childhood or is there a space in a previous time of challenge that you draw from to deal with now and how does this affect your artwork how does this come into the work you do in your creative space that creativity sphere and i know you're not just a painter cindy i know you're also a really really dedicated writer and write almost every day if not every day yeah so you're talking about life experiences things that things you uh, draw, yeah, you're, that you're drawing from that you are saying like you mentioned you you mentioned childhood yeah issues that uh, you are, have gained you learned things from childhood experiences that you're actually building into your responses now right I think um, growing up in a, a, a lovely family I love my family but uh, alcoholism was a big uh, factor in in how uh, things were handled I was the youngest of four and so um, I feel that uh, the other kids had a little bit more independence to get away and I felt like I was a little bit more stuck in my younger youth. Uh, so, um, but I had this mother and uh, father who would always go back to positivity. And uh, so it was a very, it was a, it was kind of up and down and up and down. And, um, but I just remember the good things. I just remember the moments of, it wasn't all down. There was a lot of ups, so I tend to just uh, focus on the up parts and the wisdom that my family would teach me. Uh, my parents, my mom was very um, good at focusing me on doing what I love. Uh, or if I was comparing myself with someone else, she would say, well, who are they? They aren't mm -hmm. even real. And, and so it gives me a sense of freedom in my art to not compare and to not worry, just to just keep going no matter what and, and let the chips fall where they may. And, mm -hmm. and so um, I learned to roll with the punches, I guess. And mm -hmm. 
you know, um, cause things will come at you all the time. And, uh, it's not like what Suzanne said. It's, it's your experience is how you handle it and how you, how you relate to it. And so I always, I'm always looking for the lesson within and mm -hmm. I'm looking for the painting to tell me what it wants to, what it wants to be. Mm -hmm. And, um, Sometimes I did a grief painting when my brother passed away. He was in hospice here and we, he lived with us for 19 years and had uh, mental health issues and probably the most loving person in the world. And um, someone, I think Gretchen Warner told me, why don't you paint your grief? And I did. And I realized what a cathartic thing art was at that moment that, oh yeah, this is what I do now. This is how it used to be physicality. It used to be playing volleyball, tennis, surfing, you know, anything to handle whatever stress I had. And now it seems like it's the painting mm -hmm. that wants to uh, soothe my soul mm -hmm. and heal it. Mm -hmm. And that's Which where kind I of go. takes me back to um, something that, that uh, Kate Worthen was talking about. Kate was talking about how art is this, that has this primacy um, in your life, Kate, where you talked about like Monday through Friday, you paint on the weekends, you do all the other things that you need to do, but, um, and that in that painting process, you are asking yourself this question more and more and of, uh, you know, what, what am I doing? why am i doing this i think you said what what are you doing this why are you doing this right so that and i would like if you kate could could actually speak to the daily practices that you use those routines that you use that can give you some structure to anchor yourself and pull yourself forward and, and chime in also if, if this strikes a chord with you Susan Caitlin or, you know, um, Jill's not here to, to chime in, but you know, that these, sometimes we can wake up and just feel like you don't even want to get out of bed, but you do. Mm -hmm. So what is that thing? What is that? Do you have a structure? Do you have a, uh, a, a list of do this, this, this to kind of move out of that space or what, tell us your secrets. So, and, and this is, you know, something that I have established for myself over the last six months. And I've been probably just the last couple months has been, this has been, you know, I sort of wrote down and put it on my fridge. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get out of the house by 10 o'clock in the morning. Now, now, mind you, a lot of times this doesn't happen. That's my plan. So I get out of the house by 10 o'clock in the morning. I go somewhere. Um, I just bring my backpack with my sketchbook with me. And just a few really simple, you know, uh, paper journal, sketch journal to draw in. And I've been, you know, down on Cannery Row, um, various places, and and I just sketch, and I spend about an hour doing that, and really, really try to observe, um, really notice as much as I can. Thinking, you know, when I get home, I'm going to paint this. I'm not going to take a photograph. I'm gonna paint what I'm seeing right now. And sometimes I even like shut my eyes and try to create a picture, like take a snapshot and then look, shut my eyes again, and you know, really try to get it on my in my head what I'm looking at. And it's actually something I read in a book, not so much the, you know, that specific part, but just developing observational memory. And um <clears throat> I think it's, anyway, so then I go home and, you know, by that time it's probably 11.30 or 12, so I eat something and then go out to my studio and try to paint what I saw and try to mm -hmm. paint it um, that day. And if not that day, the next, you know, within two days before that memory fades, because, uh, you know, the next time you go back, it looks different. The mm -hmm. sun's different or you notice different things or it's just different. So that's been my daily practice that I've developed um, as a result of, you know, really, really being kind of thrown, thrown inside and not, yeah. you know, and to keep my sanity. Oh. Susan, Caitlin, do you have a kind of a 
intentional daily routine or do you give yourself, are there certain things that you kind of have created for yourself that are some kind of a daily or weekly framework? Um, yeah, I do. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I, as Kate, similar to what Kate does is, um, I, there, let me put it this way. There's times I, my studio's upstairs in my house and there's, and um, there's times I'll be wrapping up and I'm coming downstairs and it's five o'clock and mm -hmm. I'll say to my husband, honey, I'm home. Mm -hmm. And it's that, it's that making those boundaries of that time to mm -hmm. focus. Um, I call it my job and, um, uh, but keeping within those time boundaries, um, because I learned from work, from jobs I had years ago that, you know, staying late was the thing to do. And, you know, there was times I was working till late into the evening and, and I felt like my boundaries, I didn't have them. And uh, I felt that that helped me feel pulled in different directions. And so, um, so I pretty much do um, my painting during the day, um, any social media during the day. Um, I try not to get into that in the evening. I just keep my mm -hmm. kind of compartmentalize some of what I do. Of course, every morning it's, you know, it's feed the cat, clean the cat box, you know, water the garden, um, do my stretches make the bed. I have to make the bed. Mm -hmm. I, if Me I don't too. get the bed made, it just feels like the whole day is out of whack. And um, mm -hmm. so, so those are some things I do. Um, having grown up in a large family, um, solitude is something that I really, uh, being alone is fine with me. I'm very happy. That, I guess I'm just a, a complete, beautiful, total introvert. But um, <laughs> so I really cute. love that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I love people. It's not being an introvert. I don't think means you don't like people. I think yeah. it's just um, I'm very happy being by myself and being on my own. And um, I got a lot of support from my parents for my artistic expression. Um, they were very, very supportive of that. And uh, yet, when when Cindy was talking, I was thinking about some of the things growing up that have. Um, that that I've taken and reframed that have really helped me now. Um, I was one of seven and um, and there were times when my mother would look at me and she would say, who do you think you are, the Queen of Sheba? And, um, and then other times, what Susie wants, Susie gets. And it obviously was not meant in a very uh, supportive, complimentary way, but I realized that some of those messages went in and really helped me today because I, I, there is this determination that I have on focus and intention that I think has really made a difference for me. Um, I haven't been actually painting for that long. Um, I think it's been now about 10 years. And um, though I majored in art, um, I really didn't paint. and it's just like this solace for me and this mm. refuge and restorative place. Um, so, mm. um, you know, taking those experiences and putting them into a routine of balance and time so that I, it helps me feel grounded. And I think during all of this time, feeling grounded and finding where we can get our ground Mm -hmm. is for me the probably the most important thing I can do because I'm no good to anybody else if I'm off yeah. center or unbalanced so in any way so right <laughs> yeah very good um I too have late in life had learned that making my bed changes everything and <laughs> <laughs> um, it really does. I, I think I must have been one of the millions of people who who saw that video. I think it was a, a, a military uh, commander in chief or somebody very high up in the military was doing a TED talk or something. And he talked to, it was all about making your bed. I mean, that was it. 
and, and how powerful <laughs> that is in your life. And I thought, oh, wow, really? That's ridiculous, but I'll give it a try. So one year, <laughs> my, my only New Year's resolution was every day I would make my bed and see how it changed, how it was going to change my life, right? Um, well, actually, making my bed did make such a huge difference because it was a completion and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I often am working from home and I would be walking around my house and I could see that my bed was just, you know, very lovely mm -hmm. and it would just make, it would give me a lift. And I'm I know so there's grateful. a sense of order and yes. yeah, and like my I, day can start now. Yes. Yeah. And I noticed actually that it kept infiltrating into oh, that space looks really taken care of. How about this space? How about this space? So I started to become a better housekeeper overall. Um, and also that completion, I've, I've always been a starter and not a finisher. And now I've really become more of uh, mm -hmm. the satisfaction of completion is just awesome. <laughs> you know, ah! uh, It's so a very really doable good. goal. Yes. Very doable goal. <laughs> I so. can finish that. Yes. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my little habits that I've been using the, briefly, the ones that have been super solid. And then I want to kind of ask a little bit more of a juicy question as we wrap up our time, because we're going we're gonna to switch over to sort of opening up the room at quarter of. And um, the habits that have been super useful for me have been, and these are really the ones I use. I mean, they're not just like, oh, you read this in a great, you know magazine article or whatever it's like these are the ones i use and they're so simple i i do make my bed um every day and if i'm walking around in circles trying to figure out what i'm doing i always just check did you make your bed and if i'm really loopy i didn't and i go back in and like you forgot that piece do that take a breath i do a daily free write. And I usually do this before I get out of bed, 10 minutes of just, <sighs> lately I've been doing more like 35, but uh, 10 is kind of my go-to. And that kind of purges my brain of all the extraneous hoopla. Um, I make a plan of the day, even if it's like uh, do laundry, three loads, and I do a little wash, dry, fold, and then I go back and I check it off. I'm a Virgo. So I think all of this is very mm -hmm. Virgo. Um, so that list, and then I go back to the list again and again, just to see where are you doing on your list? And of course I notice my list is usually vastly too ambitious. So I've become much more unambitious in my list making. Mm -hmm. And the big, um, the big chunk in my day used to be four hours of painting. So let me tell you that since COVID happened, and I've noticed this in other periods when we've had road closures and such, my creativity completely shifts gears. It wants to do something else. It doesn't want to paint. It wants to do something else. And I have learned to simply follow the energy. The form could be painting. It could be knitting. I can knit eight hours a day if that's where the energy wants to go. It could be um, making a quilt. It could be chopping vegetables for making one dish after the other. Um, I have learned to follow the energy and the form will follow that and to let that be. So if I'm not painting, I'm not painting. If, where does it want to go? It's going into the garden. It's going into cooking. It's going into making things for other people. It's going into creating programming for free classes on YouTube. Um, and it's okay, it's okay. Don't wait the form with all the expectation. Just your creative, your creativity is, is being challenged by life. Where does it wanna go? Let it go. And, I, and I'm bringing that back to all of you and I wanna kind of start um, back with um, Cindy Mori. Mm -hmm. This kind of, what have you learned in brief from this time in brief. Um, in brief and you know the follow the energy thing is something i started learning when we started having catastrophes shutting the highway this time around what i've been learning is that i find my peace in nature and that when all else fails get outside and go for a hike for five hours get lost out there but um, right now the smoke is not allowing us to even go out outside at all so 
that's not the one I'm using mostly. <laughs> but how about you? How about you, Cindy Moore? Well, I, yeah, it shifts on a day-to-day -day basis. I think it's learning about being fluid uh, each day. Um, so I try to wait, I wake up and I go, I'm here. I'm here again, I get another day. Uh, start with a cup of tea and um, clean the kitchen. Uh, and I write and I write, I do my rituals and um, go outside, look at the garden. Mm -hmm. Maybe I start an art project, same thing. Uh, just learning to not be grasping at what I wanted to do and seeing mm -hmm. what, what I can do. Like looking at the moment, what can I do? What, what's available instead of mm. uh, thinking, oh, I used to do this. I could have done that. It's like looking at the past. Oh, this could have happened. This, you know, it's none mm -hmm. of that anymore. I don't have time mm -hmm. to waste. I just, you know, mm -hmm. if I only have crayons, I take crayons. If I have a brownie mix, I make brownies. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Something. <laughs> Beautiful. How about you, um, Kate Worthen? How does this resonate with you? What have you learned? Well, actually, um, I think what you're saying is something that I, I can probably um, spend some time thinking about because I know I, I'm kind of doing the opposite. I'm not, you know, I'm not going with the flow. I'm sort of trying to enforce, um, you know, this kind of discipline on myself um, because I'm afraid that I'm just mm -hmm. going to fall out of the habit. And it seems like the longer it takes, you know, the longer I go but between going out painting or something, the harder it is for me to get back in. So I've just been, yeah. Yeah. but I think there is another way I could go with it. And that is, I, I mean, I've had this sort of idea in my head about how I, how I, you know, like pictures in my head of things that I'd like to paint, but then I'm like, no, that's, that's not how I do it. So maybe I could just, you know, let that happen a little bit. So that's actually a, a thought I hadn't had. So. And let me just say really quickly, what I think is fascinating is at different times, one is one path, that path of go with the flow is, um, is right for you. And sometimes it's not because you have to give yourself that sort of structure and say, whether I feel like it or not, I'm doing this, I'm staying with this, I'm staying with this. And I absolutely want to honor that as opposed to like, this is the right way or that's the right way. It's like, yeah, they're both, they're both really important. The discipline right. an artist um, brings to that decision to show up for themselves in this particular way of you're making your art is how you get that work done. And, um, and, and, and that's really important to acknowledge. Yeah. We actually have um, just a few more minutes before we open up the room. Can I come back to you, Susan, Caitlin, and just the question is really, what do you, what have you learned, I would say, in this most recent episode mm -hmm. of cri time of crisis, and I, which would, could include 18 months, it could include 10 months, it could include the last 10 days, depending on which crisis you want to pick <laughs> up. <laughs> just pick your crisis. Yeah, or parts. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, I think that what relates to all this time, uh, the 18 months even, is that time is precious. Mm. And, you know, and, and I hear that all the time, oh, don't waste it because you never know it might be your, you know, every day is a gift. And it is, it is. And, um, to just go easier on myself. Mm -hmm. um, when you were talking about making your lists, and, and I do that too, I'm not a, a Virgo sun sign, but there's that, um, is I make these really long lists and then even as I'm making them, I know I'm not gonna achieve them. And I get this feeling of like uh, not feeling good inside. And so um, I, pick the most important and mostly um, there's this um, perspective of just trusting in the well-being that well-being is is my natural state is our natural state mm. and to 
know that while it's real messy and unknown, we're on a path we've not been on before, that things will work out. Things always work out. They might be challenging, but they do work out. And, um, awesome. you know, and our attitude is everything. Um, everything is what it is. And the only difference anything <laughs> makes is our attitude towards it. That's one of my favorites too, from an old KAZU programmer here in Pacific Grove. I yeah. think that's a great spot to, um, to shift the horse, shift horses and move over to Tom, who's going to introduce or open up the floor to the, um, all of our participants who are here today. I think we have 250 people registered today. And some of them may have questions. Um, they may have comments. They may want to share their own habits or, or what they have learned. And um, I'm going to hand, the, hand it off to Tom to speak to that. Hey, everybody. Um, I, uh, I'm going to ask people, if you'd like to ask a question of the group or any individual person, there's a raise your hand feature somewhere on there. And if you do that, I will spotlight you if your video is on. And then if you would unmute yourself, uh, we'll, we'll all be able to hear better. Thanks. Mm. Unmute. So I have Lillian right raised her hand. Good morning. It's a it's a real privilege to be on this call with everyone. I have a question for Kate Worthen. I'm wondering if you could tell us about those three beautiful ladies that are behind you in that painting. Yeah, certainly. Um, this is one of my favorite paintings. I have another one. This is Scarlet Helga Scott Scarlet Brown. Um, she used to live here. Uh, she used to live in Carmel. Um, but she has moved up north, and um, yeah, I love her work. Um, any oh, it's uh, so it's acrylic and collage. There's there's paper on there and acrylic paint, and it's called Let's Do Lunch, and they're um, they're like cats cats. So, mm. did you want to know more what her name is? I can email it to you. Or did you catch that? I did, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Maybe, maybe put it in the chat for other people though. Okay, I'll do that. Do we have any other questions? I, I uh, if there's no other questions, or if you're thinking of a question. Oh, I see a hand raised, Jocelyn Nusson. Let's yeah. see if we can, get, hi. Good morning. How are you? Oh, just great. Good to see your face. <laughs> Thank you very much. And um, it, what a pleasure. Mm. How happy, enchanté, to meet all of you. Mm -hmm. Enchanté. And, um, so um, I could consider myself a painter as I have painted and I have paintings, but I, you know, in the back of me is, is one of them. But I don't really paint. I think about painting a lot. And, I, and I'm really an art appreciator. Like I see art everywhere. Yesterday I was just looking at the shadow of something on, on something else. And it was like, oh, God, what art that is. I could paint that. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful just the way it is, like right there. But as I was listening to you this morning, um, I had kind of have a revelation of some artistry, my dreams. I'm thinking about the dream I had last night and there was just so much in it. I mean, I could write a story, I could paint many paintings and, 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 and the way the dream is actually dealing with what's happening right now and telling me about what's going on with me uh, like I oh I didn't realize I was anxious like that mm. but in my dream I was really anxious oh I didn't realize I was lost like that because I keep having this recurring dream of 
like I'm hiking in the mountains and I'm going somewhere and, and I'm getting lost and I'm asking people and they don't know. And there was some, someone, I think we all feel that way. <laughs> yeah, someone, uh, I asked a question and I get, I come in this little village and there's uh, maybe two restaurants and I go in one of them and, and I asked a woman, is there a bus coming by here? Whatever, the way she answered me was so rude. And, and I said, well, goodbye. Um, you know, um, you are unkind. Oh, mm. you're very unkind, goodbye. <laughs> and then I thought, wow, but that's me. Like I actually was very unkind to some people yesterday. Like we have the, um, in the bed and breakfast in our house and we still have guests coming in and, um, mm. and one wasn't wearing a mask and uh, just the way I said it to her, you know, mm. the, it, was, it was rude. Mm. Um, and I realized, oh, I'm becoming antisocial. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's just so great because you notice it and then it's gone. You know, you can really mm -hmm. go once you've noticed it. Yeah. And it really makes me... <clears throat> Becoming aware of yourself, it's, yeah. uh, it's a full-time job. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm scared. I'm worried. Um, mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. I can let it go. You know, I can, I can let it go. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not attached to your thoughts. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. That's a big teacher. To the, the big learning of I am not my thoughts is very powerful, and that's something that I have certainly learned in the last couple of years as I have found myself tormented with thoughts as I've gone through different very critical and hard times is all of these things swirling around and yet I am not them I am not those things thank you so much for sharing with us and I have a question from someone else who has in the chat the question is uh, this some days I just feel really fragmented and can't seem to stay with anything reading cooking crafting painting for very long advice please <laughs> now mm -hmm. that I mean especially in the beginning of uh, some of these huge events I that is so absolutely mm -hmm. you cannot you cannot hold uh, the line will not hold and I would just say that, uh, especially when I had young children, this was a thing I was also dealing with all the time, was feeling so pulled in so many directions and unable to, to uh, really bring back my attention to anything fully. And I'll just uh, give one tip that I used, which was I would set my timer and I would, if I had this 10 things I wanted to be doing on this particular day, I would set my timer for 20 minutes or 10 minutes and just do that thing for that amount of time, yoga, cooking, laundry, artwork. And I was like, I don't have an attention span right now. So I'm giving myself these really short little blocks to just cycle through. And it was a kind of a way of structuring being really, really scattered, but also having a lot of things I had to do because I didn't know how to take some things off my list. Um, and we don't always know how to prioritize. I think that's something that we lose sometimes is you cannot figure out what's the most important thing to happen. Um, and it is one of the clarifying things when a fire is approaching, if there's one thing to ha you have to do, it's, you know, stay safe. And if you want to get something out of your home, this is the time to do it. It's not the time to be on a long call with, you know, a, a friend in need who could take an hour chat with it may be like that's not going to happen right now this is what's going to happen and uh, we can we can become very focused you know uh, in the big sur community when we're confronted with disaster we get very focused as a community the rest of the time we're very unfocused as a community i would say but during these times of crisis things can get very uh, very okay we've got a problem at hand let's go deal with it but you know that kindness that was a kindness invitation to be kind to yourself, Susan Caitlin offered. And um, to, to, to know that as you're cycling through this fracturing of self, that's kind of part of what's happening. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's okay to be just like that. It's, it's not only okay, it's absolutely 
part of the process. And, and after you go through that and find a few little tools to just bring some love to yourself through that, you, that will change too, and you will find that focus. I see Myra. Mm -hmm. Myra. Myra Clar, you can I unmute stopped. yourself. I just did, I think. Okay, I hear you. Uh oh. No, she muted herself again. Myra, you need to unmute yourself. There we go. Myra. <laughs> okay, now you're good. Now you're okay. good. Well, do you have okay. a question? Uh, I just wanted to say that during this time that is so bizarre, I have learned that I can learn new things. And it's amazing to me at my age, uh, I've learned to play chess. And I'm really doing pretty well at it. And I also decided that I don't want to have a lot of things that I feel that I have to do so I don't write anything down. I make my bed first thing in the morning. I take my walk. And when I've showered and dressed, I decide I feel like what my heart wants to do. So the other day, I worked on a poem that I had started a long time ago and worked out pretty well. It was a poem about 9-11 because, as you know, I could see the towers from my home. I mean, it was just that way. Mm. And I did it, mm. and I felt so good having done it because I just needed to tweak it a little bit, and I felt very good about that. And I also decided I'm going to do a little painting. I didn't decide what I wanted to paint, but I was really inspired, Erin, by your paintings that on your cards. And I just, I sat down and it was as though that energy was just flowing. And I thought, this is a very good day. I'm having a really positive day. So I just wanted to say, oh, nice. not every day is like that, but when I have days like that, I'm thinking, this is a good day. As my father used to say, every day that I get out of bed and I'm walking on top of the grass, I'm having a really good day. Oh, and that is the way I that's feel about beautiful. it. That's beautiful. That's how I feel about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to um, ask, let's see who, oh, okay. Is that Marlene? Yeah. Hi, Erin. How are you? Good to see you, Marlene. That's great to see you because I haven't been down there in ever and my question, my comment, I'm so thank you for this, by the way. It's, it's wonderful to be able to have this um, with other artists because I have a very okay. full-time job plus. And um, COVID actually has allowed me to basically put my weekends and I don't go out anymore. I basically paint, but it, and the painting is, is my question. As Erin knows and a lot of it, I always painted plein air and I just was outdoors all the time and I had to and I only did pastels and I had to get bigger um, and I also needed to wasn't able to be in the sun as much and especially with all this I can't really go out and paint for hours on end and so it's moved indoors and it's become more abstract and um, or starting to and I, I was reading something and I'm going to sort of read it because it's a little comment from a book, if nobody's read it, Ninth Street Women. It's an amazing book. Um, and it's all about the abstract expressionist women in, in, um, that came out of the Ninth Street show in New York back in the 1950s. And mm -hmm. it's just amazing. It's a thousand pages, and it's amazing. But there's a, a comment here when he's, it, it's, and he says, the painter no longer approaches his easel with an image in his mind. He went up to it with material in his hand to do something to that other piece of material in front of him. Mm. The image would be the result of this encounter. Mm. And I read that and I say, that's what I'm struggling with because I always was outside and I had this landscape to look at. And even if it was an abstraction of what wound up on the painting, on the, on the, on the, um, on the canvas, it was this landscape influence abstraction. And I mean, the one behind me is a work in progress and it still is out of my head. But I guess so my question is for those of you, like for Cindy, I'm looking at your piece and it's amazing mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, do you just pull things out? I, I mean, how do you get to your, I, I guess I'm asking the abstraction and in, in any things you've, 
or, or anybody else, I know Aaron, you do abstract work as well, like pulling from out inside to get to that point of not letting it feel like you have to make it an image. And I know that's probably well, a whole lesson. <laughs> no, I, I think that as I, as I start playing with the colors, um, uh, images come, things just come to my mind and I'll just continue layering it. Are you using oils or? I'm acrylics, acrylics. but I'm layering in acrylics. And I, love, yeah. and I find that I'm using my hands and I'm using sponges and I'm not using brushes. Yeah, anymore. yeah, that's so yeah. fun. That's what I do too. I um, And then I'll do plain air and then I'll do, I'm learning oil painting with Aaron and watercolor and trying everything I can just because it's fun and scary mm -hmm. and all that. Uh, for me, it's just I layer and layer and I, I walk away and come back and let the painting tell me what it wants to be. I'll start to see things in the painting and then I'll start to block out, which was really hard for me to do at the beginning. Um, I literally uh, sweated and cried to take away any of my beautiful colors that I put down on the canvas. Um, the one behind me, obviously not a lot of blocking out, just kept adding on and on and on. It's probably about 30 layers. Uh, I just stay with the canvas and then a feeling comes over me where I see something or I just, I just feel done and I, and I almost literally drop my, um, my brush. It's just feels done and I walk away. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have time for one more question, and I'm going to take us. There we go. We're going to have a question from Caitlin Reclusado, and then and then we're going to wrap up this portion, and then we'll just have a few more minutes after, just a, as a general wrap up for all of us. The program will be over officially, but we'll hang on a bit longer just to unwind with each other. So, hi, Caitlin. Hi, neighbor. How are you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> um, you too. Thanks for doing this. I just wanted to ask, um, I'm not a painter, I'm a photographer. And I feel like what I, what I deal with is just having these really big ideas, like really big grand ideas. And, and then there's always that, that per, inner perfectionist or that inner voice or that inner critic that's always like, oh, well, it's, it's not ready or you have to have this or it has to be this. It's very like rigid. And, and that rigidity often prevents me from actually trying to, to manifest any form of it. And I was wondering as, as, you know, experienced artists, you probably also know that voice really well. And what are your tricks for kind of making it work with you instead of against you? Dealing with perfectionism and that, just that voice that stops you. Yeah. Do you want to speak to that? Um, possibly Kate Worthen? I was thinking you might have a good one for that. I think so too. That's interesting because I was thinking, I hope she doesn't call on me because I don't have the answer. <laughs> but you, do you know that space? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I do. And um, uh, a painter that I really admire, Kali Wisson. Um, so he said, you know, there is no perfect painting. There's your best work your good work and your not so good work. So I, I just, those are the words I live by. It's, it's not gonna be perfect. I try to do, sometimes I try to do the same scene over and over again, hoping that, you know, um, I, I don't have the answer to that. I, I don't, I just, <laughs> I don't think you, there's that. What, what, like you do, what you do though, Kate, is you show up and you make the work anyway that's and that's, that's what true. you do that's mm -hmm. the, what that's what the work is it's you show up anyway and you do it anyway and you uh grasp you you wrestle with all those mm -hmm. um issues of perfectionism and what have you and um yeah. melinda sent or not uh, lillian wright wrote the itty bitty shitty committee yeah that's a name funny. for the inner critic <laughs> um yeah a trick I use is I work in series. So if I have a great idea, I don't just do one version of it because it will suck it, or I'll think it will suck. It'll be like, oh my God, that great idea did not become a great painting. So I will make a uh, series of, of interpretations of the idea so that each one of them can be an attempt and each one of them will take me deeper into 
getting manifesting that great idea and eventually i might have a hundred manifestations of the idea maybe no one of them is the idea as it as it was here but all of them will hold a piece of that and that mm -hmm. takes a lot off the hook for me as a painter also working small i work very big but doing many small versions mm -hmm. I, I learn more by doing 10 very small paintings than i would learn by doing one mid-sized painting for 10 hours. I just find for me, the iteration, 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 mm -hmm. lets me just take everyone as an experiment, as an experience. And, um, and ultimately, that's what it's all about. That's how I approach. Um, it's not about a perfect object. It's about just show up, just show up, just show up, just show up the form will take care of itself. So we're gonna wrap up this conversation and thank you to everybody who has hung in there with all of us through this beautiful hour that has been so amazing and so <laughs> human and so rich. And I'm gonna leave us with a quote that's from Desmond Tutu that I just read this morning. I think it's so perfect. And then um, the, the, art, the five artists are gonna hang in there for another 10 minutes and um, you're all welcome to join us as well as we just carry on in a more informal way. But Desmond Tutu writes, your ordinary acts of hope and love point to the extraordinary promise that every human life is of inestimable value. Mm. And I love that because a lot mm. of us just are trying desperately simply to get through an ordinary day. <laughs> Not even trying to do extraordinary. Just breathing is hard right now. Seriously. Really? Um, for a lot of us in California and Oregon, uh, literally just breathing is hard. And when you find that even that simple act of breathing is challenged, it puts a lot of other things in perspective. Thank you all. And, um, and those of you who would like to stay on, please do. And we will carry on the conversation. It's 12.08, so we're, we're gonna go until 12.15. So we have about seven more minutes.